Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and last August, I made a video going over which version of each version pair I believe to be the best to pick, primarily based on which version has more useful and stronger version exclusive Pokemon. That video only had the first four generations though, because if it had all eight of them, it would be way too long. My God, the first part was over 30 minutes with just four gens, and this that also has just four gens is gonna be even longer than that. Which, by the way, if you haven't figured it out, this is gens five through eight. I'm finally finishing it. Sorry it took me so long. These are a lot of work. So yes, the title says every generation in this video is not every generation, but I've now covered every generation. So I'm fine. Thank you for listening. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel since less than half of my viewers are subscribed, which is deeply troubling. And let's dive in to- Ha ha, it is I, Guarantee Boy. Oh, come on, not again. Dude, I have a lot of video to get to. What do you want? Oh, you don't need to worry about the rest of the video for you won't be able to read your script. I have stolen your glasses. Um. Grunty boy, do you not see that I am currently wearing glasses? I, well, oh my God, do I need glasses? Well, if you do, I recommend getting some like mine from Jins, the sponsor of today's video. They've just come out with the Jins Pokemon model, which features a large variety of Pokemon themed frames and colors, like the Snorlax, Mew, and Kanto models, plus more. Mine happen to be the Cyndaquil model and they are fabulous. But even if you don't need glasses, you should still get a pair from them because they have some really nice blue light filtering lenses that make the load on your eyes a lot easier when you're staring at screens all day. I do enjoy Pokemon stealing them specifically, but I'm still not sure about this. After all, I won't be able to try on the glasses ahead of time. Ah, but you can. With their virtual try on feature, you can easily see how the frames will look on you from the comfort of your own, uh, hideout. Oh, well that's brilliant. Wow, I can't wait to start my own glasses journey just like starting a Pokemon journey. Well, you can do just that by heading to jins.life slash mnjtv, linked in the description below, and you can use code mnjtv15 for $15 off. By the way, you mentioned a Pokemon journey. How did yours start? Illegally. Anyways, I'm off to try some pairs on. Ta-ta. Huh. Well, that was an oddly pleasant exchange. Well, anyways, thanks again to Jens for sponsoring, and let's dive into the best versions to pick in Gens 5 through 8. First up, we have Black versus White. Now, there are quite a lot of version exclusives, but like with the first video, I only care about the ones you can obtain before beating the main story. I'm evaluating these Pokemon based on their viability in a playthrough, and a playthrough, as I've been defining it in my challenges, is until you beat the main story. So Pokemon you can find after that don't matter as much, and I'm gonna trim them out because it makes the video a lot shorter too. Black versions exclusives are Gothita, Gotharita, Gothitelle, Volibi, Mandibuzz, Tornadus, and Reshiram. For white, they are Solosis, Duosion, Reuniclus, Rufflet, Braviary, Thunderous, and Zekrom. First is Gothitelle versus Reuniclus. Both are psychic type Pokemon with the same base stat totals, just different stat spreads. Both have at least one very good regular ability, competitive on Gothitelle and Magic Guard on Reuniclus. They also have extremely similar level up movesets. It's close, but I'm giving the edge to Reuniclus. Gothitelle only has a base speed of 65, which is not very good. Reuniclus has lower speed, but I think that's fine since it wasn't gonna outspeed anything anyways, so it gets to use those extra points it didn't put into speed into bulk, meaning it's only a little less bulky, but hits a lot harder. Next is Mandibuzz versus Braviary. Unfortunately, both of these Pokemon, while still coming before the league, arrive extremely late. Volibi and Rufflet are not available until the route right before the Victory Road. Even then, they're only found at a max level of 41, which means you'd have to grind them up 13 levels to evolve them, which is, God, Unova's evolution levels are, well, they're bad. Additionally, by this point in the story, you probably already have a Pokemon that is your main flyer because you have eight badges. You've probably been flying around by now. So to be perfectly honest, 
This one's a toss up because I don't recommend either of them. If they had a better evolution level and came earlier, then yeah, but not in this case. The next matchup, Tornadus versus Thunderous, is also very late. You can't trigger the roaming until after you have eight badges. I highly doubt you'd use one on your team, but I guess I can give a slight edge to Thunderous. Electric Flying is better typing than Pure Flying, having more offensive coverage and having fewer weaknesses. Finally is Reshiram versus Zekrom. These show up extremely late, literally, as the final main story battles are happening. They have similar stats, one being a physical attacker over a special attacker. Zekrom's typing is better due to having one more resistance, since Fairy did not exist in Gen 5, but Reshiram is better against one more of Ends and Getsus' Pokemon than Zekrom. I think these two are a toss-up. Another difference between black and white is the first example of a version exclusive gym leader. You fight Iris in black and Drayden in white. But this doesn't really matter. Their teams are the same aside from the Pokemon's genders. So that doesn't matter. In summary, I think the only comparison that really matters at all is Gothitelle versus Reuniclus. And even then it was close. But I'm still giving the edge to white version because Reuniclus and Thunderous both won. And also because Opelucid City looks a lot better in white version. Could we talk about this? The rustic temple with the greenery, it's fabulous. As opposed to in black version, where neon vomited everywhere. Next up is black two and white two, which have the same version exclusives, but with more added on top because of all the old Pokemon that became available before the league. The only new ones before the league in black two are Beedrill, Magmortar, Lopunny, and Grumpig, while in white two, they are Butterfree, Electivire, Delcani, and Camerupt. For Beedrill versus Butterfree, they are both bad and you should not use either of them. However, for the sake of comparison, I'm going with Butterfree. The fairy type doesn't exist yet, so Beedrill's poison typing is more of a hindrance than a helper. Since it makes it weak to Psychic, a type it wouldn't normally be good against. Next is Magmortar versus Electivire. Magmortar is slightly slower, but slightly bulkier compared to Electivire. While their offensive capabilities are about the same, Magmortar has the edge here. Magmortar has access to a bountiful amount of special fire moves, while the best physical electric move Electivire learns by level up is Thunder Punch. It is tough being a physical attacking electric type if you don't have a signature move, because your options are Thunder Fang, which is weak, Thunder Punch, which is underwhelming, and then freaking Wild Charge, which does recoil. Like, come on guys, give Zing Zap to more Pokemon than just Togedemaru and Pincarchin. As for gym matchups, Magmortar is good against Roxy's Whirlipede, Berg's Gym, Skyless Skarmory, and all of the Colress battles. Electivire is good against Skyless and Marlin's Gym, but that's about it. I think it's clear that Magmortar is the winner here. Next is Lopunny versus Delcaddy, and this one is no contest. Lopunny's base stat total is 100 points higher than Delcaddy's. Finally is Grumpig versus Camerupt. Both have similar base stat totals, but Grumpig's spread is better, balancing bulk, speed, and offense, while Camerupt has equal physical and special attack, resulting in not enough speed and defenses. Neither are very helpful against the gyms that come after their obtainment point, Drayden and Marlin, but Camerupt is great against Colress, and Grumpig is great against Marshall. They are close, but I'm giving the edge to Grumpig. Like I said, I think its stat spread makes it more effective, and not having a four times weakness is quite nice. So those are the new pre-league version exclusives, but there are some other differences that impact the old version exclusives that we need to discuss. The first is that Mandibuzz and Braviary are actually found at a reasonable point this time. They can be found in the overworld on Route 4. Mandibuzz on Thursdays in Black 2, and Braviary on Mondays in White 2. So now I'm actually gonna delve into their differences, because it matters now. They have the same base stat total, but Mandibuzz is far more defensive, while Braviary is more offensive. These overworld ones will always have their hidden abilities, weak armor for Mandibuzz and Defiant for Braviary, and in my opinion, Defiant is far better. Mandibuzz has the dark secondary typing, while Braviary's extra typing is normal. It was a tough call, but I gotta give the edge to Braviary, the main reason being the abilities. Mandibuzz is designed to be defensive, but weak armor is an awful ability for a defensive Pokemon. While Defiant is just an incredible ability for any physical attacker. So Braviary doesn't have the extra dark coverage, 
but the abilities just make a huge difference. Also, another change that's important to mention is that the legends that were version exclusives in black and white do not matter for black two and white two. Tornadoes and Thunderous aren't even found natively in the game, and then Reshiram and Zekrom have switched games, but they're found post game. And remember, I only care about the ones you can get before the league. That leaves us with Black 2 having won with Magmortar, Lopany, and Grumpig. White 2 won with Butterfree, Reuniclus, and Braviary. This looks to be a tie, but I can break it by eliminating Pokemon you're unlikely to use. Lopany is not that good before it's Mega, and there are better normal types if you want one. Grumpig also comes very late and is definitely inferior to other psychic types like Gothitelle. Butterfree is, well, it's Butterfree. That leaves Black 2 with Magmortar and White 2 with Reuniclus and Braviary, giving White 2 the win. Oh, and also White 2 has the better looking Opelucid City, of course. Now to Gen 6, starting with X and Y. And these games are a little bit weird with their version exclusives because some of them can become not version exclusives if you get the right friend safari. But the friend safari is post game, so we don't care about it. Can I get a hail yeah? For X, the fully evolved pre-league exclusives are Pinsir, Mightyena, Sock, Slurpuff, Starmie, Houndoom, Agron, Clawitzer, and Xerneas. For Y, they are Cloyster, Heracross, Tyranitar, Lightbird, Throw, Aromatisse, Manectric, Dragalge, and Yavotal. First is Pinsir versus Heracross, and Heracross is the easy winner. While their stats are similar, Heracross is actually a fighting type and therefore gets stab from its fighting moves. Pinsir does not. Next is Mightyena versus Lightbird. Lightbird has noticeably better stats, so I'm giving it the win here. Next is Sock versus Throw. Sock is faster and hits harder, while Throw is slower and bulkier. For a playthrough, I personally tend to prefer the faster attackers over bulkier Pokemon, since in most major battles, you'll have the type advantage and won't have any problems if you can outspeed an Oko. So because of my personal preferences in that regard, I'm giving Sock the win. Next is Slurpuff versus Aromatisse. Slurpuff has a slightly better base stat total than Aromatisse, but it has a glaring flaw. It doesn't get Moonblast, the best fairy move in the game. Why would you make any fairy type special attackers that cannot get Moonblast? Just, what? Granted, it can get Dazzling Gleam via TM, but Aromatisse gets Moonblast by level up and also hits harder. So yeah, Aromatisse is better, which is not a phrase I ever thought I would utter. Next is Starmie versus Cloyster, and here are their stats. Clearly Starmie is quite a bit more balanced. Since their secondary typings don't matter a whole lot for the major boss battles, I'm giving the edge to Starmie. Great speed and special attack is very nice. Meanwhile, Cloyster has incredible defense, decent attack on both ends, meh speed, and then terrible special bulk. It's just a weird spread. Next up is Houndoom versus Manectric. Houndoom is an easy win here, since not only does it have better stats, but having two types allows it to be useful against more major boss battles. With either Fire or Dark helping out with the Grass, Electric, Psychic, and Ice Gems, plus the Steel Elite Four battle, while Electric helps with only the Water Elite Four battle. Next is Agron versus Tyranitar. Agron has far more resistances and fewer weaknesses, but two of them are four times. Agron also evolves 13 levels lower than Tyranitar, but since you find Lairon and Pupitar at about level 45 in Terminus Cave, the evolution level is not as much of a problem. The stat department shows us a clear winner though. Tyranitar has vastly superior stats due to being a pseudo legend, so that's enough for me to declare it the winner. Next is Clawitzer versus Dragalge. They have very similar stats with Clawitzer having better special attack and Dragalge having better special defense. They're pretty close, but I have to give the win to Dragalge. Its dragon poison typing will help with the grass and fairy gems, plus the dragon elite four member. Cloitzer's pure water typing is only really helpful for one of Grant's Pokemon, and then against the fire elite four member. Additionally, since both of these Pokemon are slow, defense matters more, and Dragalge has better defenses. Finally, is Xerneas versus Yavotal. Pronunciation. Intentional. They have the exact same stat spread, just with Xerneas being fairy type and Yavotal being dark type. They are obtained pretty late, like most legends, only right before the eighth gym. I'm giving the edge to Xerneas here, simply because fairy is a much better typing than dark flying. 
Additionally, Geomancy is an insane boosting move, especially if you use a Power Herb, although you probably wouldn't do that in a playthrough. Also, Xerneas is better in the final few battles of the game. Helping out with the Dragon Elite Four member, well, Yavotal doesn't have a type advantage against any of the Elite Four. Their box art legends, so of course they're both amazing, but Xerneas I think is just a bit better. This means X1 with Sock, Starmie, Houndoom, and Xerneas. While Y, one with Heracross, Lightbird, Aromatis, Tyranitar, and Dragalge. It was close, but to me this means that Y gets the overall win. Now onto Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and they have the same version exclusives as the original Ruby and Sapphire, just with some more. However, those extras only come after you get the national decks, which is after you have defeated or caught Kyogre or Groudon. Now this does technically mean that it's before you fight the league, but I still don't think they should count. They're basically all just fossils or legendaries that have a lot of hoops to jump through. Literally, like having a level 100 Pokemon in your party or having all the lake guardians, just a bunch of crazy stuff like that. And then there are a few left, but they're not really game changing. So for the sake of simplicity and my sanity, I'm just gonna focus on the version exclusives for most of the main story before the national decks. For some of the version exclusive matchups, my answers are the same as they were for Ruby and Sapphire. The Lottis and the Space Rocks, Solrock and Lunatone, are toss-ups, while Omega Ruby has Zangoose over Sviper, and Alpha Sapphire has Ludicolo over Shiftree. One of Shiftree's big flaws in the original is that it's a physical attacker, but all dark and grass moves were special attacks. That's not the case anymore. It has some good physical grass and dark moves, but I still think Ludicolo's better because it's just a lot more versatile. However, there are now two big changes to the original matchups. The first is Mawile versus Sableye. Originally, I gave Sableye the win since Mawile was totally useless, but the game has changed. Mawile is now a Steel Fairy type, and both of these Pokemon can now Mega Evolve. Latios and Latias can also now Mega Evolve, but like, it equally benefits both of them, so who cares? Both have great typing, and while they both have the same base stat total, Mega Mawile has huge power, meaning its attack stat is effectively doubled. This massive attack power is a big point in Mawile's direction, but there is another. The Mawileite can be found long before you unlock Mega Evolution, but the same is not true for Sableye. Its stone is not found until the Origin Cave in Sutopolis. Mega Mawile has more power and is accessible earlier, which makes it the winner. The other big difference is that Groudon and Kyogre now have their primal reversions. Kyogre's of course helps it out a lot, but Groudon benefits from its more. The Desolate Land Sunlight completely removes any threats from water attacks, and it becomes a fire type that it now gets stabbed from, meaning its only weakness is ground, which is ironic for the land Pokemon. Plus it gets Solar Beam at a lower level, and even if it didn't, TMs don't break anymore, so you can now have it no Solar Beam before rolling into the league. In Ruby and Sapphire, I gave Kyogre the win because it matched up better against those last few late game battles, but that's not the case anymore. Groudon is now vastly superior against Wallace since the sunlight completely stops all of his water attacks, and then he decimates most of Sydney's team, all of Glacia's team since it's no longer weak to ice, and because the sun stops her from setting up hail. Hail yeah, or maybe in this case, hail no. And it has super effective coverage for four of Steven's six Pokemon. Primal Groudon is busted, more busted than Kyogre in my eyes, so it now gets the win. This means Omega Ruby has Zangoose, Mega Mawile, and Primal Groudon, while Alpha Sapphire just has Ludicolo. Omega Ruby gets the win. Now on to Gen 7, starting with Sun and Moon. The fully evolved exclusives in Sun are Alolan Ninetales, Rampardos, Whimsicott, Caracosta, Braviary, Passimian, Turtonator, and Solgaleo. In Moon, they are Alolan Sandslash, Bastiodon, Lilligant, Archeops, Mandibuzz, Orangaroo, Drampa, and Lunala. There are Ultra Beast exclusives as well, but Say it with me, kids. They are post-game, so they are lame, and we don't care. Get them out of here. First is Alolan Ninetales versus Alolan Sandslash. Alolan Ninetales has a much better base stat total and only has one four times weakness instead of two, making it superior. Next is Rampardos versus Bastiodon. In Diamond and Pearl, I gave Bastiodon the edge, and I'm doing that here again. 
Rampardos' stat spread just isn't good. Its attack is incredible, but it's too slow and too frail to make use of it often enough. Next is Whimsicott versus Lilligant. Their stats are similar with Whimsicott being faster and Lilligant hitting harder, but I'm giving the edge to Whimsicott. Its fairy typing dramatically improves its coverage capabilities, and Prankster is a much better ability than any of Lilligant's. Next is Caracosta versus Archeops, and Archeops definitely wins. Despite its ability, Archeops is incredible in a playthrough, most of the time being able to outspeed an Oko any playthrough opponent before it can have its stats dropped by its health getting lower. Next is Braviary versus Mandibuzz. I don't recommend either of them since you'll be waiting forever to evolve them since they're caught at a low level but don't evolve until over level 50. Because of this, I'm making it a toss up. I should mention that your Mandibuzz would not have weak armor because you can find them without their hidden abilities in Sun and Moon, but who cares if it doesn't have weak armor if you're stuck with a Volibi until level 54. No, no thank you. They're both garbage when they're not evolved and they evolve too late, get them away from me. Next is Passimian versus Oranguru. Passimian is a fighting type offensive Pokemon while Oranguru is a psychic normal defensive Pokemon. Both are found in the lush jungle. Passimian's fighting typing is good against Olivia, both in the Kahuna battle and the league, plus Nanu. Oranguru is good against the Totem Kamo O and the elite four member Hala. Since Passimian matches up better against three battles as opposed to Oranguru's two, I'm giving Passimian a slight edge. Next is Turtonator versus Drampaw. And I don't even need to compare any of their battle attributes because there is only one factor necessary to make this decision. Turtonator is found on Blush Mountain between the Electric and Ghost Trials. Drampaw isn't found until Mount Lanakila. You know, the effective victory road. When one of them can be used for a solid chunk of the playthrough, and the other one would be one of the last freaking Pokemon you can find. Obviously the choice is Turtonator. Finally is Solgaleo versus Lunala. Both have amazing stats, abilities, and movesets, so the main difference is just typing. This leads me to pick Solgaleo. Lunala's Psychic Ghost typing has two four times weaknesses, two immunities, and two resistances. Solgaleo has more weaknesses, but none of them are four times. It also has an immunity and a plethora of resistances. In my eyes, Steel Psychic is just better than Ghost Psychic. This means Sun 1 with Alolan Ninetales, Whimsicott, Passimian, Turtonator, and Solgaleo. Moon 1 with Bastiodon and Archeops, while Braviary and Mandibuzz were toss-ups. Sun is the clear winner here. Next up is Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. They have the same exclusives as Sun and Moon, plus with more added on. However, a chunk of those are the Ultra Beasts and Legendaries you can find in the Ultra Wormhole, which I believe is before the League. But like with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, who really cares, man? It's so late, we don't need to talk about them. Just like, there's so many, and it's just... The new fully evolved Ultra Sun exclusives that I care about are Houndoom, Golurk, and Clawitzer. In Ultra Moon, they are Manictric, Claydol, and Dragalge, and also the Basculin forms, but like, they are the same other than their abilities and the abilities aren't that different. So like, we're not talking about them. For Houndoom versus Manectric, I'm making the same call as in X and Y, Houndoom. It simply has much better stats and more offensive coverage. I'm doing the same for Clawitzer versus Dragalge. Dragalge doesn't have a boss battle advantage anymore, being good against the Dragon and Fairy Trial while Clawitzer is good against Olivia in the League and Hapu. However, I'm still giving the win to Dragalge because I think its stat spread is better and its more unique typing means you're less likely to have an existing overlap on your team, which matters since you get it late game. Finally is Golurk versus Claydol and the edge goes to Claydol. Golurk hits harder but is slow and not that bulky. Claydol has far superior bulk, which lets it stick around for more hits. Also, Baltoy evolves at a lower level, making it more useful sooner. So the comparison table for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is the same as Sun and Moon, but with Houndoom added to the Ultra Sun side and Dragalge and Claydol added to the Ultra Moon side. Clearly Ultra Sun still has the advantage and wins the matchup. Now on to Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Let's Go Pikachu has the partner Pikachu, the Sand Slashes, Vileplume, Primeape, the Mux, and Scyther. Let's Go Eevee has the partner Eevee, Arbok, the Ninetales, Alolan Persian, Victory Bell, Weezing, and Pinsir. Now you may have noticed something weird about these lists as you were scrolling. 
Growlithe and Cantonian Meowth are version exclusives, but Arcanine and Persian are not. That's because in Let's Go Pikachu, you can get a gift Persian in Vermilion City, and in Let's Go Eevee, you can get a gift Arcanine. This screws everything up. In previous Kanto games, Arcanine was the counterpart of Ninetales, and Persian was the counterpart of Primeape. But now, are Arcanine and Persian counterparts? But then, like, does that make Primeape and Ninetales counterparts? Which is weird, because they're found in completely different places? I don't know, this is a mess, this has gone on too long, and I'm kind of losing my mind. To preserve my sanity, because this video's been so long, and it took me a really long time to write it, I'm not worrying about Primeape and Ninetales, because, like, they're very different Pokemon. Really should not be compared. So, I'm just gonna ignore those. And also Arcanine and Persian. It's my channel, I do what I want. Please don't hate me. For Pikachu versus Eevee, I'm going with the partner Eevee. Pikachu is a good electric specialist, but Eevee has access to a lot more really good exclusive moves with a lot more coverage. Next is Sandslash versus Arbok. Like in previous generations, Sandslash wins. It's got better stats and the ground typing is more useful than the poison typing, especially considering how few fairy types there are in Kanto. Then is Alolan Sandslash versus Alolan Ninetales. Like in the Alola games, Alolan Ninetales has better stats by a sizable margin, and therefore is better. Next is Vileplume versus Victory Bell. Vileplume gets the edge because its stat spread is better. I don't like that Victory Bell develops both its physical and special attack, since it makes it lose out in bulk. Vileplume puts more investment into just special attack, making it bulkier and able to hit harder. Next is Muck versus Weezing. Like the previous pair, one of them puts more investment into one attacking stat, while the other does not. And I think this makes Weezing's overall viability suffer, since it doesn't hit as hard and is less bulky. So I think Muck is better. Next is Alolan Muck versus Alolan Persian. This is easy, since Alolan Muck has a much higher base stat total and better typing, only having one weakness to ground. Finally is Scyther versus Pinsir. Scyther is a bit faster, but Pinsir hits a bit harder. I'm giving the edge to Scyther because of its extra stab flying coverage. Scyther doesn't learn X Scissor until a much later level, but the X Scissor TM is accessible around the same time as Scyther, so that isn't an issue. This leaves Let's Go Pikachu with wins for Sandslash, Vileplume, Muck, Alolan Muck, and Scyther. Let's Go Eevee won with Partner Eevee and Alolan Ninetales. Let's go Pikachu gets the win. Finally is Generation 8, Sword and Shield, and a big difference in these is the version exclusive gym leaders. In Sword, you fight B and Gordy, and then in Shield, you fight Alistair and Melanie. Which of these is better? I don't have a preference. I didn't think either of them were that difficult. So like, which ones do you think are cooler? Doesn't matter to me. That means I only care about the version exclusive Pokemon, and dear God, the list of version exclusives is as long as hail. I'm gonna be real, I am exhausted uh, of doing this. So I'm one, not gonna care about any of the legendary Pokemon in the Crown Tundra, because who gives a crap? You shouldn't be using those on a playthrough team anyways if you wanna have fun. And then two, any version exclusive matchups that have happened before, I am making the same winner happen. With a few exceptions, because there's some of them where I had one of them win in one game and another one win in its remake, and I'll talk about those. For Shiftry versus Ludicolo, the winner is Ludicolo. For Mawile versus Sableye, the winner is Sableye. There's no Mega Evolution anymore, so Mawile is no longer overpowered, and also it does get Steel and Fairy moves, which it was not even a Fairy type in Gen 3, but they come a lot later than Sableye's stab moves, so I'm giving Sableye an edge because of that. Solrock versus Lunatone is a toss up. Gothitelle versus Reuniclus, Reuniclus wins. For Braviary versus Mandibuzz, Mandibuzz is better. Mandibuzz has not won before, but you can actually get one that does not have weak armor this time, and you can just catch a wild Mandibuzz so you don't have to deal with a Vullaby the whole time. So Mandibuzz is better, the Dark Stab is useful. For Slurpuff versus Aromatisse, Aromatisse is the winner. For Passimian versus Orangaroo, Passimian's the winner. Oh, I just realized I made Passimian the winner in Gen 7 because of the boss battle matchups. God, I... Who cares? Passimian, it's play sports. 
Sports are fun. For Turtonator versus Drampa, Turtonator wins. They're obtained at the same place now, but the fire offense is more helpful than the normal offense. In the Isle of Armor, there is Pinsir versus Heracross. The winner is Heracross. And for Clawitzer versus Dragalge, Dragalge wins. Okay, so those are the repeats. Now on to the new ones. For the new Galarian forms and Galarian evolutions, Sword has Surfetched and Galarian Darmanitan, while Shield has Cursula and Galarian Rapidash. It's not really clear which one is the counterpart of which because they're found in very different places. So what I'm gonna do is just match them up based on what they are. Surfetch versus Cursula because they are new species and Galarian Darmanitan versus Galarian Rapidash because they are new forms. For Surfetch versus Cursula, I'm giving the edge to Surfetch strictly because the fighting type is more useful. Matching up well against the Rock and Ice Gym. Wait, no, not the Ice Gym because it's only in Sword. Freaking. Ugh. Several of Raihan's Pokemon and the Chairman Rose battle. Cursula's ghost typing really only comes into play against the Ghost Gym, which it is also weak to. For Darmanitan versus Rapidash, the edge goes to Rapidash because it is obtained far earlier in the game before the fifth gym, while you can't get Galarian Darumaka until after you have all eight badges. Next is Scrafty versus Toxicroak. Both have the useful fighting type, but I'm giving the edge to Toxicroak because its poison typing is helpful against the large amount of fairy types you fight. Scrafty's dark type doesn't get as much use since the ghost gym is not in sword. Next is Flapple versus Appleton, and I'm giving the edge to Appleton. Flapple's meant to be a frailer attacker, but I don't think it's fast enough to make that work. Next is Stonejourner versus Ice Q, and Ice Q is just a far better Pokemon. Its ability can be really fun and effective, while Stonejourner's stat spread is just really weird to work with. Next are the pseudo legend exclusives in the base game, not the DLC. So Kamo Owen, Hydreigon in Sword, and then Tyranitar and Gudra in Shield. I'm matching up Tyranitar and Kamo O because they're both the Dusty Bowl roamers, and then matching up Hydreigon and Gudra. For Hydreigon versus Gudra, Gudra is better. Hydreigon is a better Pokemon in competitive, but I'm evaluating this based on playthrough viability, and Zwilus simply evolves too late. For Kamo O versus Tyranitar, I'm going Tyranitar. I like its higher investment in physical attack as opposed to Kamo O's split spread. In the Crown Tundra, we have Amistar versus Kabutops, and despite my loyalty to Lord Helix, I'm picking Kabutops. Its physical attack gives it more rock type offensive options. Amistar's only special rock options are the weak ancient power or the two turn meteor beam. Next in Crown Tundra, there is Salamence versus Garchomp and the edge goes to Garchomp. If you catch them in their base forms, you'll be waiting a long time before you can use Salamence's secondary flying type for offense. A Gibble can run with ground moves right away and it's a very useful typing. Finally would be Zacian versus Zamazenta, but they're post game, so they are lame. Oh, we don't care. Get them out of the hair. <laughs> so that leaves Sword winning with Passimian, Turtonator, and Surfetched, while Shield won with Ludicolo, Sableye, Reuniclus, Mandibuzz, Heracross, Dragalge, Galarian, Rapidash, Toxicroak, Appleton, Ice Q, Gudra, Tyranitar, Kabutops, and Garchomp. Okay, all right, yeah. Clearly, Shield won. I picked the wrong version. So there we have it. After many months and a new year, I have finally figured out the best version to pick in all eight generations. I'm so tired. So the last thing we're gonna do is just summarize all of them, including the ones from the first video. The list of the better versions is blue, gold, sapphire, fire red, diamond, heart gold, white, white two, Y, Omega Ruby, Sun, Ultra Sun, Let's Go Pikachu, and Shield. Thank you so much for watching, and I suppose thanks to my patrons over on Patreon, who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates, which are booty butts in January, if you didn't know. And if you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, big events. Gotta catch them all.